Bitcoin, which is something called a cryptocurrency, may have been skeptical of it, maybe even dismissive. But as the years have passed, it's become obvious to everyone that it's not going away. And it's probably going to be a central feature of our future. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Can you benefit from it? And by the way, what is it exactly? You may have been afraid to ask that question. So we've searched long and hard for about five years, actually, to find someone who can answer all of those questions in a credible way that non-experts can understand. And we think we found one. He is Michael Saylor. You probably recognize he's an entrepreneur, of course, co-founder and CEO of MicroStrategy. He is a huge investor in Bitcoin specifically. And we think, maybe despite that or because of it or both, the man to ask. So he joins us now. Michael Saylor, we're really happy to have you here. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So I basically summed up my own position as clearly as I possibly could. I, I didn't know what to make of cryptocurrency. I don't understand it. I made fun of it. It's clearly not going away. It's clearly a really big deal. Um, so let's just start at the beginning, if you don't mind, explaining what is it? Okay, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first engineered monetary system in the history of the human race. Full stop. So now to explain it, the first question is, what's money? The second question is, what's the problem? And the third question is, what's the solution? Right. Bitcoin is the solution. Now go back to the beginning. What is money? Well, an economy consists of goods, services, and property. You know, I want you to do something for me. I want that product. I want you to manufacture something for me. I want that house. I want that land. That's half the economy. Now, the question is, how do I send uh, 37 horses to you and then how do we keep the books balanced? So you have to send me back money. Money is socio-economic energy. It, it is, it is, money is monetary energy, or it's, it's the energy, the backhaul energy that we use to trade with. If I can send you 10 bushels of corn and you can send me money equal to 10 bushels of corn, then we can trade with each other. So in the history of the world, human beings have tried different monies. We've used seashells. We use the giant stone coin of the Yap people. We use tobacco bales in, uh, in, pre in colonial America. We've used copper coins, silver coins. We've used stone coins. We use glass beads in Africa. These are all types of money. Eventually, we got to, got to settle on gold and gold coins as money. But gold was never fast enough as money. How do you move 10 tons of gold from here to there? So ultimately, people use ledgers, and those ledgers were issued by a merchant, or they were issued by a mayor, or they were issued by an emperor. And uh, you know, you can go back 5,000 years, and you can find Sumerian tablets in clay where they've etched in like 37, you know, bushels of oats in return for something. These were the ledgers. So uh, money is is that that shared ledger of who owes what to whom. And, um, and, and a lot of times the money is a token, like a glass bead. But the problem with a glass bead is if the Africans use a glass bead and the Europeans show up and they can manufacture a million glass beads, the Europeans dump a million glass beads on the Africans. The Africans lose their homes and their livestock and all their wealth and they're impoverished. So if you have weak money and someone else has strong money, if they can manufacture the money, in the Pacific Islands, they used stone coins. Some European showed up in a ship, and he realized that stone coins are rare on one island, but they're very plentiful, big stones on another island. He sailed to the other island, picked up the stones, brought them back to the first island, and enslaved everybody on the island. <laughs> oh, so it's like, problem. So, so the problem with money is, how, how do we keep track in a fair distribution of who owns a claim to what? So you've noticed a lot of people buying cryptocurrency. The reason is really simple. Central banks have printed so much money that its value is plummeting. It's called inflation. So what is cryptocurrency? What is Bitcoin exactly? Well, we scoured the country for more than a year to find someone who could explain it to us, who really understood it and who had skin in the game. Michael Saylor is the man we found. There's really no one better we've decided to talk to you about this topic. Michael Saylor is an entrepreneur, a business executive. He's raised billions in Bitcoin, and he's worth listening to on the topic. By the way, his company just dropped more than $400 million on it this afternoon. We sat down for more than an hour with Michael Saylor for a genuinely fascinating episode of Tucker Carlson today. Here's a small part of it.
the currency is to the economy what your blood is to your body and economic energy or money is to the currency what oxygen is to your blood. So common sense says if I keep sucking the oxygen out of the room, if I suck the oxygen out of the room, you're going to either suffocate or freeze to death. And if I keep sucking the economic energy out of the currency, the economy collapses. In the extreme, you get ripped back to Stone Age barter. Right? When the money doesn't work right, anymore, right. I have to trade you cigarettes for bullets. Right. And the problem with that is, is the economy becomes a million times less efficient. Right? If you don't have money, it's like, now how many countries in the world have a collapsed currency? 66 are dollarized. There's 180 about countries. There's 130 floating currencies. All of them are weaker than the dollar. The US dollar is the world's reserve currency. The US dollar is expanding. It was expanding 10% a year for a decade, now expanding at 14% a year. It expanded 34% over the past 12 months. The dollar is weakening. Okay, it's like the auction is getting sucked out of the room. So, Tucker, if I told you the oxygen is getting sucked out of the room and there's an oxygen mask drops out of the ceiling over there, what would you do? Run for it. Yeah, put the oxygen mask on. Bitcoin is the oxygen mask. Bitcoin, the, the idea of Bitcoin, let, let's, let's move to the okay, third Let me spot, pause and say, right? you've made the most compelling case I've ever heard for the need for something like Bitcoin. So you're saying, just to make sure that everyone's following this, the whole point of Bitcoin is to escape the inflation vortex that has consumed all these previous empires. The point of Bitcoin is to fix the money. And money is energy, and energy is life. And if I keep sucking the energy out of the economy, I'm sucking the oxygen out of your system. Either under the best case, you perform poorly. Under the worst case, I suffocate you to death or freeze you to death. That's the problem. That's why, it, that's why empires collapse.